It can be quite emotional. These rescues basically happen all around the year, but for example, hot summer days, we can get several hundred eggs or several hundred chicks in one go. There have been years where we had over a thousand chicks at Sankov. We are currently at a level that we are actually calculating whether it should be listed as critically endangered. I'm Kata Ludinia and I'm research manager at Sankop. And Sankop is a seabird rehabilitation centre in South Africa. We see about a thousand African penguins a year. The general idea is always that penguins live in the cold, that they live in Antarctica. But there's actually several species that live in these kind of warmer climates. Historically, I think there were several millions of African penguins in South Africa and Namibia. Obviously, historic numbers are always hard to get, but we kind of work on that. We currently have about 2% of the wild population left. So numbers have gone down dramatically. There is some pictures from like 1906 or so from some of the islands along the west coast of South Africa where the island was literally covered in penguins and now you go to the same spot and you hardly see a penguin in the picture. We are currently at a level that we are actually calculating whether it should be listed as critically endangered. There are predictions that the species might be at least functionally extinct in certain areas by 2035. There's obviously a lot of conservation projects that are being carried out to save the African penguin, and one of them that Sankov is heavily involved in is the, the rescue of eggs and chicks. Sankov has been hand-rearing African penguin chicks since, I think, 2006. These rescues basically happen all around the year, but, for example, hot summer days, we can get several hundred eggs or several hundred chicks in one go. So there have been years where we had over a thousand chicks at Sankop. When we think of climate change, obviously the first thing that comes to our mind is, is heat waves. And it is predicted that here in South Africa we will be seeing more kind of extremely hot days on average per year, especially when birds are on eggs or with chicks, that they often abandon their eggs and chicks uh, because they just get too hot and they need to go to sea to cool themselves down. If they're on eggs, that's obviously a problem because A, the eggs get exposed to the heat, so they basically get boiled. The other problem is that obviously they get left alone, so then predators have it easier to get to the eggs. It is quite stressful to be out in the colony when these things happen. I've been out in a, in a heat event where it was a very hot day and then the wind died down. You see the adults first kind of going to the water, cooling themselves down, but the chicks can't go. They're not waterproof yet and they start kind of panting, opening their beaks, gasping for air. Um, they try to find shady spots, but a lot of these colonies don't have really any shade. And you're pretty helpless. I mean, you kind of start, I know we, we started with like, you know, spraying a few with a little water um, bottle or whatever, or providing some shelter, providing some shade. And but then you start seeing them just kind of falling over one after one. Quite heartbreaking. Historically, the African penguin actually mainly bred in winter in South Africa, and we have a lot of trouble with storms, with rain, flooding in some of the colonies. We have several colonies that are relatively low-lying, so during winter storms, part of the colonies actually get flooded by, by large waves, so we have a very, very low juvenile survival rate at the moment. So, And that all obviously will, will get even worse with, with ongoing climate change. But there's also environmental changes that, that causes uh, changes in water temperatures, changes in currents. Previously, the fish stocks were mostly along the west coast of South Africa. The majority of fish that can still be found in our waters is along the south coast of, of South Africa. We lose a lot of eggs and chicks because the parents can't, can't sustain them. If there is times when there is hardly any fish around, parents might decide to rather abandon their chicks. Our rangers go in and they take the chicks and they get taken to Senkop and then they get hand reared for our staff. Um, and then when they're old enough, they get released back into the wild. They first get kind of rehydrated so they literally get kind of a, a tube down their throat and they get some, some liquids and kind of some energy drinks and then they slowly get introduced to feeding and then they also start swimming which is something that is kind of special to, to birds in rehab because birds in the wild don't get swimming practice before actually they leave their nest so our birds have a little bit of an advantage because they actually get to swim and then once they have reached a certain age in white they can swim an hour without their plumage actually getting wet so they're kind of fully waterproof then they're actually being released back into the wild. And the nice thing was hand red chicks, we release about 80% of them that we rescue. The first year survival is basically the same. The problem is obviously with, with hand rearing all these chicks and rehabilitating all these birds that we release them into an environment that 
we know is not sustaining the population because there isn't enough fish. So there is a very strong fishing pressure, especially on the fish stocks on the west coast, which historically was a stronghold for the African penguin breeding areas, the fisheries and the penguins or all the seabirds and all top predators are, are competing for the same resources. By installing marine protected areas or, or no fish zone, it's obviously not only benefiting the one species. There is lots of other seabird species that breed on the same island. I really hope that we kind of learn to kind of see the bigger picture. It can be quite emotional. Seeing them out in the wild just keeps you going. I mean, they're just so incredible. Seeing the birds come back in the evenings, come ashore, feeding their chicks, um, and that just keeps you going and, and wanting to protect them and, and make sure that they, they exist for longer.